Just Party Things, Just Party Things Cox, Deletes Fruentes Video, Apologizes, Creators who are not willing to stand by their creation are grifters and should be dismissed. They are here to drain the waves of fame, but aren't willing to handle the responsibility that comes with it. Um, I did remove the interview. Um, I, again, did not think through a lot of the repercussions of posting that, so I just removed it. You can see that she's been coached by the anti-racist left. I didn't think of the repercussions. Oh, now my friends are writing to me saying they won't be on the podcast anymore. Now my agent told me I would be losing viewers and money. Now this institution contact and this is this is the woman brain right there laid out for you. That's how it works. It is just a set of convergences of influence that come from outside. No principle between behind these two eyes. Nothing that emerges from inside the cranium. It's all, well, now I realize this consequence because it came from someone else and someone else told me that and someone else did this. Um, if you do want to see the full interview, Obsidian did react to it. That's on his channel. Um, the intention was not, uh, I guess, to hide it. It was just, you know, this might not have been the best move. I'm just going to remove it now. Um, so again, racism has no place in society. And I do... Racism has no place in society. You know when a two-year-old or three-year-old comes up with a special way of phrasing? You know, you know when you hear about a three- or four-year-old trans baby or trans child? You know how you can tell that this comes from a parent? You can tell that it comes from the mother? I hear racism has no place in society. I hear a slogan of the ADL here. I hear something that she was coached to say. <clears throat> I see a child in Just Party Things, and I would like to know who's the adult behind. Do take accountability for bringing him on. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. So she takes accountability for bringing him on. Exactly the, uh, the, the type of series of excuses that are pre-written, that are, that are coached by whatever handler is controlling her stuff. Holy shit, is that disappointing? Because, and I don't regret saying she was a cool girl. Because when I said she was a cool girl, I wanted to show openness to someone who shows openness. There's no problem in rewarding openness. And then when the person exposes themselves for real, uh, you, you deny that openness. You say, all right, well, I, I remove my approval of yours. And I remove my approval of just barely things. Our responsibility as podcast host is sometimes to create circumstances where the clash of ideas happen and where our audience can be elevated by looking for the facts themselves and perhaps being shocked by things that they wouldn't have considered but that they, they are now exposed to. Um, so, no, uh, absolute disrespect for a creator who takes the ride on the wave of fame because that was certainly doing tick, 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 tick in her bank account as she was exposing her podcast to a whole new audience on the internet. She did so for drainage purposes, and then she leaves, she, she leaves because she has no principle. And this is all a ritualistic apology for the purpose of not being cancelled. Well, I thought that the whole idea of inviting Nick Fuentes was precisely to, to make a charge of cancel culture. To say I'm going to look for myself into the reasons why this guy shouldn't have a bank account or this guy shouldn't be on a fly list or should be on a fly list, on a no-fly list. So you totally fail at holding the original principles that motivated you into inviting him and you show to your audience that ultimately you side with leftist cancel culture. That is it for, you know, for my opinion of just barely things. As far as I'm concerned, she's just like one of the others cannot be a thought leader, uh, cannot be anything. Uh, because if you cannot tell the righteousness of the cause of freedom of speech in a society that claims to be about freedom of speech, if you cannot die on that hill, then there's no hill you're willing to die on. <laughs> so you're, you're just a machine of reinforcement. But we know where that leads, these machines of reinforcement. Here's where it leads. Appearances on a black podcast for the purpose of apologies, just 
hours after she had published that video. Here they are recreating the interracial porn scene. Uh, but the post podcast version of it with uh, nine guys, nine black guys around a white woman, a transfer of the ritualistic humiliation that was once reserved into the Pornhub corners of the internet, only now to be displayed to the general audience of YouTube. Like diehard fans, you know, that are more like for Pearl, but I would say, I don't know, maybe half and half ish, or maybe 60, 40, roughly. Okay. I mean, I don't know about you, King, but I feel like I, I've supported Pearl because of Pearl as an individual. I feel like yeah. the content could be found elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we only say this because uh, I think what a lot of people would say is that the Black community has supported you and kind of been the pillars that have built you up. See? This is, those are not the original thoughts of a Black man from the podcast industry. That seems like handler language. To, to say, hey, you know, don't forget the family is behind you. We've always been supporting you. We've helped you rise. Now, now you do this to us. I can't believe this. That is, uh, that is not how, you know, open, intellectually open black male, even high IQ ones, behave and talk. This is the thinking of a member of a mafia who's like, we elevated you, we, you know, uh, why are you doing this to us? Why are you inviting our enemies on there? Very interesting here. I still see a child speaking, but not in Just Barely Things this case, in this podcast host. I see a child who's being coached by someone else. Mm -hmm. At least that's the word on the street. Mm -hmm. um, but before you, before you respond to that, would you describe yourself as in support of the Black community or is what you do just in passion for the content itself? Um, are you talking about the reason for my content? Mm -hmm. um, I would say the reason for my content is to support men's issues and create media that advocates for men's issues. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's specifically about... If you side with cancel culture, just pearly things, you're not doing a good favor to men. Because cancel culture is the armed weaponry of the anti-male attitude in modern society. Have you ever noticed that men tend to be more canceled than women. How does that work? There are certainly as much women, at least, that are annoying bitches as there are assholes out there. It's because cancel culture is directed at the cognitive structure of the male brain. Cancel culture, by its characteristics, targets males who think originally. And because there are more males who think originally than females, Cancel culture ends up being a weapon against males. You cannot seriously be, be saying that you are for improving the state of men in our society and then side with the very mechanism by which they lose their reputation, job, capacity to do business, bank account, family, children taken from them. All of this through some form of cancel culture. Blanket says JF doesn't realize just because she has someone on doesn't mean they always agree with the person. I don't think that her cognition approaches this level of analysis. I don't think that she's in the, ah, oh, well, the, the object isn't necessarily the subject, which I would be into because I'm an analytic guy, you know, a philosopher of sorts. Yeah, you know, you can cover something while not being for it. But I don't think she even reached that intellectual degree, which is not so high, by the way. It's, it's like a 105 IQ talking point, this thing. I don't think that she's at 105 IQ reflection here. I think she's at the, oh, well, lots of people are calling me. And they're telling me you should apologize. Oh, well, I got this guest who I've already filmed a podcast with. And the guest told her, don't publish our podcast together. I'm canceling you. And so she is in the space of female opportunism, which is the only space that females live in, by the way. Uh, the 3D space isn't even uh, within their concern. Their brain is a, is a social blob that seeks to, to, to obtain advantage where they can, which is why you never get a principled stance from them. Race, it's more about men's issues. Okay. Um, Pearl, do you plan on continuing with the same style of content with the same 
uh, demographic? The same. Well, I plan on keeping on doing my shows. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing a documentary soon. I think that's like my next big. Oh my God. She's taking the Lauren Sutton path documentary. Next big thing. I, I think that her show will be wind down a, a lot starting now because the way she answers, she doesn't seem to be uh, fascinated at this. I'm going to continue to do my show. E, the, the, like, if you're a true podcaster who, who's like, oh, I'm going to die in front of the camera. Uh, you're not like, oh, yeah, I'm still going to, you know, continue doing my show. But, wow, I think that she's done. I think that uh, we'll get uh, much less releases from this show and it's going to be much less exciting going forward. Well, so be it. That is it for the Just Barely Thing story. What do I retain from it? Uh, I, I retain, I, I don't think that I've committed errors in supporting her because I've supported her at a moment where she was doing the right thing. And now she's doing the wrong thing and I, I withdraw my support <clears throat> in general. And I was never deceived that she would hold the line. But in general, just don't be deceived. If you, if you have that kind of brain to be easily swayed and manipulated, be careful. Uh, these, uh, these cloud surfers, uh, they, know how to drain the, they, they know how to drain the cloud and try to then get away with it and try to even drain on the apology. <clears throat> but there's no double dipping with Papa JF. Uh, there's nothing to be apologized for. You have exposed your audience to talking points. If you felt that Nick said something that totally violates your personal value, <clears throat> you can offer an alternative to the audience. You can say, oh yeah, you know, when he said this, Nick, fully disagree with him. But, but she didn't do this. She is instead joining the cancel mob that she, that was the, the very initiation of her interest in Nick. Why are so many people canceling Nick? Let's see. And now she realized, well, cancel culture will turn against you when you extend empathy to a male who thinks for himself. And you cannot be out there claiming yourself to be some sort of masculinist or some sort of men's right advocate if you join that mob when it turns toward you. Stand with the people who get targeted by that mob or you're no one as far as I'm concerned. Joshua Larson says, well, I want to tell you what you want to hear, but also leave myself open to the next person in the room, what they want to hear. <laughs> what a web of lie we weave when we start practicing to lie. That is a beautiful sentence that, that I think applies here. It's not even a lie. It's, it's the non-statement space of the female cognition. Well, fuck this woman. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofer. Remember to like and subscribe.